the fusion reactor has one of the most unchanging and unambitious designs in the Volts mod pack. The best way of improving your reactor is to understand its mechanics. The fusion reactor itself runs on deuterium, extracted from water, and a constant feed of electricity. Most reactors are capable of running a water pump, several extractors, and its own primer with power to spare. When fueled and powered, a fusion reactor will generate seed plasma in four spaces, marked with will enclosed in electromagnetic glass. The generated plasma will burn and destroy all blocks except for electromagnets, particle accelerators, force fields, and bedrock. This makes any other block very useful as internal scaffolding whilst building. It's also worth noting that a resistant block can also be used to prevent a fusion reactor from making the seed plasma. Without electromagnetic shielding, activating the reactor will result in the plasma expanding until it destroys itself. Shielding your reactor and its power source with electromagnets will produce a flailing plasma blob until it runs out of power or deuterium. Plasma has a large expansion potential, and is not confined to the typical electromagnet path. Generating power requires boiling water to steam to drive turbines, so the more active turbines you can get onto your reactor, the more power you'll get out of it. There are a few simple rules about steam. An electromagnet that is next to plasma will boil adjacent water. Electromagnetic glass on the other hand does not, never generating steam. Two smaller points. The water doesn't need to be a source block, and turbines must be immediately above heated water to generate electricity, even another layer of water will block the steam. With these, we have all the factors for designing new types of reactors. There are four spaces which must always be in the design, but otherwise the plasma path is variable. There must be a constant supply of water to electromagnets, and a turbine immediately above them. I will now share with you the results of this research. The animation at the start of this video showed a reactor with 28 active turbines. This reactor has 80. In survival it will be considerably more expensive than the standard, but the power it produces is on par with an infinite battery. Excluding your power feed, it uses fusion reactor, 56 electromagnets, 32 electromagnetic glass, 82 turbines, 105 wires, plenty of blocks, and a wrench. We'll start off with a scaffold of the plasma path. It'll burn away harmlessly later. The underside of the path is glassed over. There is one glass in each corner, and the rest of the path is sealed in with standard electromagnets. Don't worry if this is a little fast, I will add a layer diagram at the end. But the general rule for water sources is placing them diagonal to electromagnets, on top of the glass, and one directly on top of the reactor block. Conveniently, most atomic science blocks can be recovered quickly with bare hands.
these red will are required for the water to flow over the tops of the electromagnets, rather than straight into the hole next to them. Ideally, use a better looking block. The second large turbine is interesting. It doesn't visibly react to the steam, but I get a higher output with it there. I suspect it's a throwback to the coating of fission reactors, where a second layer of turbines will also contribute energy. That's why turbines have a red tip on their undersides, as an input from a turbine below. And that's it. If there's any other volts or tech it devices you want me to make a tutorial on, let me know in the comments section. And I leave you with the diagrams of the reactor to help in your race to world domination. So from your deluded scientists, see you next time.